Good day, students. How was your day? I think everyone is ready to explore new learnings today because we will continue the second part of our lesson in tabulating the recorded data relevant to production of processed food. The second part of our lesson is about the proper measurement of ingredients, techniques in measuring and weighing ingredients, as well as the factors and purposes of recording and maintaining records. Let us start with the equipment in measuring volume, which includes the following. We have the measuring spoons, dry measuring containers, liquid measuring containers, and the weighing scale. Are you now excited to work in your kitchen today? Here are the procedures or the proper way of measurement of ingredients as well as the pointers to remember while measuring. Let's watch this. How was your experience after watching the video of proper measuring of ingredients? I see the smile on your faces and I think that is a positive response. Let's proceed with the techniques in measuring ingredients. Number one, miss and class. This is preparing all your ingredients before you start cooking. That is why it is important to make sure that all ingredients are properly measured before you start combining them. Number two, measure dry ingredients using a spoon or scoop lightly into a spoon or cup. Then, level off using a spatula or a top with a flat surface like the back of the knife. Number three, in measuring liquid ingredients, we have to fill the measuring cup or flask and then place the flask on a level surface. Use your eye to be sure the lowest of the liquid curve. This is known as the meniscus, is at the best measure. Number four. In using a fixed dial, we have to weigh the field you plan to use in weighing food. Make sure that the dial indicator is at zero mark. If you will use digital scale, certainly press the tear button to zero the scale. I will now present to you the four factors to consider in recording weight and measurement of ingredients. Number one, mass. It is the amount of material an object has. The base unit of mass is grams. For heavier mass, the unit used is kilograms. Number two, Volume. It is the amount of space something occupies. The unit used for measuring volume of liquid is the liter. Number three, accuracy. This refers to the correctness of a single measurement. Accuracy is decided via comparing the measurement in a position to the true or accepted value. A precise quantity is close to the correct value like hitting the middle of a bull's eye. Number four, precision, which reflects how nice a chain of measurement agree with each other, whether or not any of them are close to the proper value. Precision can often be adjusted, the use of the calibration to yield values which can be both 
accurate, and precise. Remember these factors because this will help you in achieving a successful output while working in your kitchen. In any food processing activity, we need to keep and maintain our records. And why do we need to keep our records? What are the purposes of maintaining records? In food organization, hold detailed records for several reasons, such as records on how the food was handled and labeled to make sure that the food was not adulterated or misbranded while under the control of the food processing business. Food organizations additionally holds record of who acquired the food from the previous source and who received the food from the organization or the immediate subsequent recipient. Next, the second motive of information is to facilitate traceability. Did you jot down and keep in mind our lesson today? That was great! And that ends our lesson today. Once again, I am Teacher John. And always remember, in TLE, matututo ka na, kikita ka pa. Till next time, bye-bye!